Welcome to your very first Sudoku tutorial. This video is for people who have never tried to solve a Sudoku puzzle before. This tutorial is also for people who have tried to solve a Sudoku puzzle once or twice without success. Playing Sudoku is a fun and an addictive game once you've solved one or two puzzles. Practicing Sudoku is like weightlifting for your brain. Your critical thinking skills will become so powerful you will have inner confidence when solving any of life's problems. Anytime we learn something new, we will have a bit of tunnel vision. Tunnel vision causes our brains to have a narrow focus, which prevents us from absorbing all the new information. In order to relax and let your brain absorb what it needs to absorb, you may have to watch this video more than once. Do not be discouraged if you are having trouble solving your first or second Sudoku puzzle. Solving Sudoku puzzles the first few times takes a little practice. When the problem solvers of the world have strong brains, they make living here a better place for everyone. Solve Sudoku puzzles. Save the world. We begin by discussing what is a Sudoku puzzle. A Sudoku puzzle is composed of a 9x9 nine nine grid of cells. There are a total of 9 rows, there are a total of 9 columns, and there are a total of 81 cells in a 9x9 nine nine puzzle grid. The columns are referenced as columns 1 through 9 from left to right. The rows are referenced as row 1 through row 9 from top to bottom. Cells are referenced by row, then column. In this example, cell R3C4 is currently outlined. Notice the notation we use for referencing a cell. Upper or lower case is fine. We use the letters R3C4 to reference row 3, column 4 in the grid. In DX Sudoku videos, often I will say 3, 4 instead of R3C4 because it's easier to say. Values already set in the puzzle grid are called givens. Cell 3, 4 has the number 3 as a given. This puzzle has a total of 26 givens as a starting point. The numbers we set in the puzzle are called values. Most Sudoku software will use different colors for givens and values. In this example, we set 3, 1 to a value of 6. And as you can see, it is colored in blue to indicate it is a value, not a given. Every Sudoku puzzle is composed of three puzzle components. The first puzzle component is the initial grid with its starting set of givens. The second puzzle component is each puzzle has a solution path. A solution path is composed of steps, where each step is a puzzle solving technique we use to solve the puzzle. I will talk about puzzle solving techniques in more detail shortly. It's important to know each puzzle may have more than one solution path. Different people may use different puzzle solving techniques for solving the same puzzle. Also, another thing to note is every Sudoku puzzle can be solved by using a puzzle solving technique called brute force. The third component of every Sudoku puzzle is the solution grid. Having a completed solution grid is the goal of solving the puzzle. Note, it is possible for a puzzle to have more than one solution grid. However, it is generally accepted that for a Sudoku puzzle to be considered to be valid, it must have only one solution grid for an initial set of givens. Next, I'm going to talk about what is a house in a Sudoku puzzle. A house in a Sudoku puzzle is a row, column, or 3x3 three three block having one of each number 1 through 9 set as a value or a given. There are 27 houses in a Sudoku puzzle. There are 9 row type houses, there are 9 column type houses, and there are 9 block type houses. Notice how each of the 27 houses has exactly one of each number 1 through 9. Note, sometimes people use the word box instead of the word block. In DX Sudoku videos, the word block is mostly used. Also note, the 3x3 three three blocks are referenced 1 through 9 from left to right, top to bottom. This is block 1, block 2, block 3, block 4, block 5, block 6, 
block 7, block 8, and block 9. Next, I will talk about two house-related Sudoku rules you will need to keep in mind as you solve a Sudoku puzzle. The first rule is there must be at least one of each number, 1 through 9, in each house. And the second rule is there can't be two of the same number in the same house. Consider the following Sudoku currently in progress. Take a closer look at the house making up column 9. Notice how the house making up column 9 currently has an open cell at 3 comma 9 and an open cell at 5 comma 9. An open cell is one that does not have a given in it and has not yet been set to a value. Based on house rule number 1, there are two possible numbers we can put in the two open cells in the house making up column 9. The only two remaining numbers currently not in the column 9 house are 4 and 8. Notice the tiny numbers now present in the open cells. These tiny numbers are called pencil marks. Some software calls these tiny numbers possible candidates. And sometimes people just call these tiny numbers candidates. Next, take a closer look at cell 3, 9. We have two choices. Cell 3, 9 could have a value of 4, or it could have a value of 8. Let's consider what happens if we set cell 3, 9 to have a value of 4. By setting cell 3, 9 to 4, we violate house rule number 2. Take a closer look at the house making up row 3. Since the house has two number 4s in it, this violates rule number 2. So we must conclude cell 3, 9 cannot have a value of 4. Since cell 3, 9 cannot have a value of 4 in it, then it must have a value of 8 because it's our one remaining choice. This type of logic is typically used when solving a Sudoku puzzle. This is why it is important you understand the two house rules. Take a closer look at cell 6, 9. Because of rule number 1, cell 6, 9 must be set to a value of 4. This is because the house making up column 9 must have at least one number 4 in it. Next, I am going to discuss how cells intersect with houses. Every cell in a Sudoku puzzle intersects with three shared houses. Consider cell 4, 6, with its background now highlighted in light green. Cell 4, 6 is part of the house making up row 4. Cell 4, 6 is part of the house making up column 6. And cell 4, 6 is part of the house making up block 5. All the cells sharing a house with cell 4, 6 are now highlighted in light gray. The intersection of cells and houses becomes important when placing pencil marks. We can't place a 1 as a pencil mark in cell 4, 6 because there's already a 1 in cell 4, 4. And there can't be two number 1s in the house making up row 4. We can't place a 2 as a pencil mark in cell 4, 6 because there's already a 2 in cell 5, 6. We can place a 3 as a pencil mark in cell 4, 6 because there are no 3s in any of the 3 shared houses. We can't place a 4 as a pencil mark in cell 4, 6 because there's already a 4 in cell 4, 2 and cell 1, 6. We can't place a 5 because of cell 5, 4 and we can't place a 6 because of cell 4, 7. We can't place a 7 because of cell 4, 9 and cell 7, 6. We can place an 8 as a pencil mark because there are no 8s in any of the three shared houses. We can't place a 9 because of cell 4, 1. So for cell 4, 6, there are two possible candidates, the number 3 and the number 8. As I have demonstrated, a cell's pencil marks are determined by its three shared houses. Here are all the pencil marks for every cell at this point in solving the puzzle. Pause the video and confirm the pencil marks are correct for one or two cells. Next, I'm going to talk about the three most popular methods for solving a Sudoku puzzle. The first method is called solving puzzles without pencil marks. With this method, open cells are left blank as you solve the puzzle. And you do each puzzle solving technique in your head. It takes a little practice, but after a while you get really good at it. 
This method of solving the Sudoku puzzle will be demonstrated in the next section of this video. The second way of solving a Sudoku puzzle is using a method of pencil mark notation. Pencil marks are put into open cells based on a set of notation guidelines. Snyder notation is the most popular method of pencil mark notation. If you are interested in learning Snyder notation, watch DX Sudoku video number 63 titled Snyder Notation. The third way of solving a Sudoku puzzle is called the modern software approach. With the modern software approach, all pencil marks are shown in every open cell from the start. Computer software manages the placement and removal of all pencil marks as you solve the puzzle. For a tutorial on how to solve puzzles using the modern software approach, watch DX Sudoku video number 40 titled Beginner's Guide. Video number 40 also talks about the seven base puzzle solving techniques. The seven base puzzle solving techniques are the seven most commonly used puzzle solving techniques for Sudoku puzzles. Next, we are going to talk about how to solve puzzles without pencil marks in more detail. For solving puzzles without pencil marks, I will use two puzzle solving techniques. The first puzzle solving technique is called one choice remaining type one. One choice remaining type one is also known as the naked single puzzle solving technique. The algorithm for finding one choice remaining type one is as follows. We are going to look at each currently open cell in the puzzle from left to right, top to bottom. So we begin by looking at cell 1, 3. We make a mental note of the intersection cells of the three shared houses, now highlighted in light gray. We determine the possible pencil marks are the number 2 and the number 5. We don't actually write in the pencil marks. We just make a mental note in our heads there is more than one possible pencil mark. Since there is more than one choice remaining, we move to the next cell. We repeat the process until we find a cell having only one choice remaining. When we get to cell 3, 1, we discover there is only one possible pencil mark, which is the number 6. We update our algorithm to include what to do when there is only one choice remaining. When there is only one possible pencil mark remaining, we choose that number as the value of the cell. We choose the value 6 for cell 3, 1 because of house rule number 1. There has to be at least one number 6 in each of the three houses shared with cell 3, 1. We continue our search. When we get to cell 7, 9, we discover there is only one possible pencil mark, which is the number 5. We choose 5 as the value of cell 7, 9. We continue our search. When we get to cell 8, 9, we discover there is only one possible pencil mark, which is the number 6. We choose 6 as the value of cell 7, 9. We continue our search. Our search is complete. If any cells were set to a value, make a second pass from the top. In this example, three one choice remaining type ones were set from the first pass. So we would make a second pass and search again from the top. At this point in the puzzle, we have made multiple passes looking for one choice remaining type ones. And there are no more one choice remaining type ones to be found. So we must use a different puzzle solving technique in order to proceed in solving the puzzle. Next, I'm going to demonstrate the one choice remaining type 2 puzzle solving technique. This technique is also known as a hidden single. For each number 1 through 9, we highlight all the cells where the number cannot be placed. We begin with the number 1. If the number 1 is already set as a given or a value, it is highlighted in light green and all the cells where the number one cannot be placed are highlighted in light gray. 
Normally, we do not highlight cells, but we just mentally note in our heads the cells where the number one cannot be placed because of an existing given or value. But just for this demonstration, cells are being shaded so you can see exactly what is going on. The next step in the algorithm is to check each of the 27 houses and see if there's only one open cell remaining where the current number can be set as a value. Take a closer look at the house making up row 1. There are no open cells, not shaded gray, because we already have a 1 as a given in cell 1, 1. So we move to the next house in our search. Take a closer look at the house making up row 2. The house making up row 2 has 5 open cells where the number 1 can be set as a value. This is not what we are looking for. We are looking for a house having exactly one remaining open cell where the number one can be placed as a value. So we continue our search. We do not find any house having exactly one open cell where the number one can be placed. So we move to the next number to check, which is the number two. All the cells where the A2 cannot be placed are now highlighted in light gray. We continue our search. When we get to the house making up row 4, we find what we are looking for. Cell 4, 3 is the only place in the house making up row 4 where the number 2 can be placed. Let's consider why 4, 3 is the only cell where the number 2 can be placed in the house making up row 4. There can't be a number 2 in cell 4, 1, 2, 7, and 9 because these cells already have givens. There can't be a 2 in cell 4, 4, 5, and 6 because there's already a number 2 in cell 5, 6. And there can't be a number 2 in cell 4, 8 because of the number 2 in cell 6, 8. So by process of elimination and house rule number 1, there must be a 2 in cell 4, 3. Before we set cell 4, 3 to the number 2, let's consider how one choice remaining type 2 is different than type 1. Here are the pencil marks for cell 4, 3 based on the three shared houses. Notice how cell 4, 3 has more than one pencil mark or possible candidate, so we cannot set cell 4, 3 to any value based on one choice remaining type 1. However, based on one choice remaining type 2, we have determined cell 4, 3 must have a value of 2. We update our algorithm notes on what to do when we find a house having only one location for the current number. We choose the number 2 as the value of cell 4, 3. Next, I am going to solve a puzzle step by step from beginning to end. Here is the puzzle solving algorithm we will use for our step by step example. The way the algorithm works is we will search for one choice remaining type 1 until we can't find any more. And then we will search for one choice remaining type 2 until we can't find any more. Then we will repeat step 1 and step 2 until the puzzle is solved. From this point in the video, I'm going to say OCR instead of one choice remaining. We begin by searching for OCR type 1. OCR type 1, cell 3, 1 is set to 6. We continue searching. OCR type 1, cell 7, 9 is set to 5. We continue searching. OCR type 1, cell 8, 9 is set to 6. OCR type 1, cell 2, 9 is set to 2. OCR type 1, cell 3, 9 is set to 8. OCR type 1, cell 5, 9 is set to 4. We switch to searching to OCR type 2. OCR type 2, cell 4, 3 is set to 2. OCR type 2, cell 3, 2 is set to 2. OCR type 2, cell 2, 1 is set to 3. OCR type 2, cell 2, 3 is set to 4. OCR type 2, cell 7, 1 is set to 4. OCR type 2, cell 9, 5 is set to 4. 
OCR type 2, cell 6, 4 is set to 4. OCR type 1 and type 2, cell 1, 3 is set to 5. OCR type 2, cell 4, 8 is set to 5. OCR type 2, cell 2, 7 is set to 5. OCR type 2, cell 2, 4 is set to 7. OCR type 2, cell 3, 6 is set to 7. Take a closer look at cell 5, 1 and cell 5, 3. These two cells form a set of locked candidates. What this means is, for the house making up block 4, cell 5, 1 and cell 5, 3 are the only two locations where a 7 can be placed. As a result, a 7 cannot be placed in cell 5, 5 further down the row, or the house making up block 4 would not have a 7 in it. So we color cell 5, 5 gray since it cannot be set to the number 7. The lock candidates in block 4 cause an OCR type 2 in cell 6, 5, now set to 7. All the cells where the number 8 cannot be placed are now highlighted in light gray. For the number 8, the four open cells in column 1 and column 3 form what is known as an X-wing pattern. The X-wing pattern allows us to color cell 5, 5, cell 5, 7, and cells 8, 4, 5, and 6 in the color gray because the number 8 cannot be placed in these cells. Another way to think about it is cell 5, 1 and cell 5, 3 form a set of lock candidates so cell 5, 5 and cell 5, 7 must be colored in gray. And cell 8, 1 and cell 8, 3 form another set of lock candidates. So cells 8, 4, 5 and 6 must be colored in gray. We color additional cells in gray. Because of the additional cells now colored in gray, we find an OCR type 2. Cell 6, 7 is now set to 8. OCR type 2, cell 5, 5 is set to 9. Next, we make a second pass looking for OCR type 2s. OCR type 2, cell 2, 8 is set to 1. OCR type 2, cell 5, 7 is set to 1. OCR type 2, cell 6, 2 is set to 1. OCR type 2, cell 8, 3 is set to 1. OCR type 2, cell 5, 8 is set to 3. OCR type 2, cell 1, 8 is set to 6. OCR type 2, cell 5, 2 is set to 6. OCR type 2, the evil cell 6, 6 is set to 6. OCR type 2, cell 2, 5 is set to 6. OCR type 2, cell 8, 1 is set to 8. OCR type 2, cell 5, 3 is set to 8. OCR type 2, cell 4, 6 is set to 8. OCR type 2, cell 2, 6 is set to 9. OCR type 2, cell 1, 7 is set to 9. OCR type 2, cell 7, 8 is set to 9. OCR type 2, cell 8, 4 is set to 9. OCR type 2, cell 9, 2 is now set to 9. At this point, we switch back to looking for OCR type 1s. OCR type 1, cell 5, 1 is set to 7. OCR type 1, cell 9, 3 is set to 7. OCR type 1, cell 4, 4 is set to 1. OCR type 1, cell 4, 5 is set to 3. OCR type 1, cell 7, 2 is set to 3. OCR type 1, cell 7, 4 is set to 8. OCR type 1, cell 7, 5 is set to 1. OCR type 1, cell 8, 2 is set to 5. OCR type 1, cell 8, 5 is set to 2. OCR type 1, cell 8, 6 is set to 3. 
OCR type 1, cell 8, 7 is set to 7. OCR type 1, cell 9, 6 is set to 5. OCR type 1, cell 9, 7 is set to 3. OCR type 1, cell 1, 4 is set to 2. OCR type 1, cell 1, 5 is set to 8. OCR type 1, cell 3, 5 is set to 5. OCR type 1, cell 3, 6 is set to 1. The solution grid for this puzzle is now complete. This completes your very first Sudoku tutorial. Please support DXSudoku by purchasing one of my books. Thank you for watching.